Welcome to another video tutorial from TullyGameArtGuru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer for another mini video. This time it's on compounds and one function in particular, the XOR. The compound is generally underrated. I absolutely love it. I have done a few videos on it. The links are in the description below. This one is on the XOR, which probably is the oddest of the four. It's the exclusive OR, which means a shape overlaying another shape will calculate the intersection and the intersection becomes transparent. Adding another shape on top, three layers on top of each other, the one that is transparent now is visible again in the overlap. Let me show you how this works in a simple example. I turn off the background so you can see the transparency properly. So we have the transparent background. I just use a couple of circles. The first circle is just a black fill. Once I take the black fill and duplicate it, make it a little bit smaller so you can see the difference and then make those two a compound. I select both of them hold ALT and click on the XOR. I get subtract. The smaller circle is cut out of the bigger one. Simple thing. But once I duplicate this one, it's not just the subtraction, it's the overlap. See, now the part that was fully visible in black becomes transparent where the third layer overlaps while where it overlaps the inner circle, it becomes black again. If I duplicate this one again, it cuts through the overlap and a duplicate of that one will make it black again. Let's use this effect for a checkerboard. I create a rectangle, give it a black fill, duplicate it and spread it out. I have even spacing or roughly even spacing by pressing Ctrl J you create the power duplicates so they are evenly aligned. I duplicate those vertical ones, rotate them 90 degrees and make them horizontal. Now I select all of them, hold Alt, press XOR and we have a checkerboard. Well, we would if I would have made sure that the duplication did not end up with an extra one. So if I move that one, you can see it works. Same with the vertical one. I just press duplicate twice. Two layers overlapping each other negate the effect. So now we have a checkerboard. Once I add a circle to this compound and set that one to XOR, you have to do that with a little icon in the layer panel. By default, it sets new elements to add. You can see that the pattern of the checkerboard gets inverted wherever the circle is. Once I duplicate this circle, you can see the pattern reverses back to normal. Once I scale the circle, you can see the difference. The huge advantage of working with compounds is the full editability. I can now select all circles, align them differently. I could move them, I could delete some, I could add more to them. The one thing it does not like is grouping elements. Groups don't work within compounds. If I want those circles to be one element, I turn the circles into a compound on their own. I can use compounds within compounds. So I select all circles and make it another XOR compound. That XOR compound inside my checkerboard compound displays just right. If I duplicate that compound now, it's easier to see the circles. When editing a compound, it's easy to just hide elements. I just turn our circle compound off and create a new shape. This time it's a cog. The cog will be turned into a light burst. So we have rays coming from the center going outwards, which is a little bit more complex than plain circles. And if I add that to the compound, set it to XOR, you can see it's going a little bit crazy. There are a lot of intersections and you get wild patterns. Quite often this leads to unexpected but interesting results.
Let me show you another example of the XOR tool used in a monogram. I create a simple C from a donut turned into a pie. I paste some bird silhouettes from an earlier video into this design. Select all of those and combine them with the C as a X or compound. Now I can move the birds around. They get subtracted from the C when they are inside the C shape and added to it when they're outside. The big advantage of the compound is it's easy to move the elements around and I have just one object. I can add effects, I can add gradients to that one shape. A golden gradient, a drop shadow added to it along with an inner bevel and I have something that looks rather cool in very little time. Knowing your way around Boolean operations and compounds is very helpful. Especially with logo creations, icons, and pattern designs, it does speed up the process. I would strongly suggest looking into it. It's a lot of fun and can lead to some surprising results. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification, and leave a like and a comment and let me know what you want to see on my channel. And I will see you again soon.